where is this connection going whether it's a new connection an old connection um whatever connection it is maybe it's someone you're getting to know maybe it's someone that's been around for a while but where is your connection going welcome back to hope to have a daily my name is angie i'm a tarot card reader from england this tarot reading is between you the universe and your intuition it's timeless and it's relevant from the moment you come into contact with it and it's up to you if you claim it or not so i've posted a photo of my cat on the community page um I think you can see the community page from mobile phones and desktops. I don't think you can get on it um, through the app on a tablet, but you can if you're going through the browser. So she's little Miss Nosy Rosie. She's a pretty little tuxedo cat. I sometimes talk about her in videos because she quite often shares my space because it's winter. Um, she's about 10 years old. She was born behind a family member's sofa. Her mum is called Isabel. She's a little grey cat. She's now got three legs. She was in a traffic accident and I had to have her back leg amputated. She's a sassy little troublemaker as well. She's absolutely adorable, very, very pretty, very outgoing and will convince everyone that she's homeless just to get whatever she wants. But little Miss Nose Rosie, she's adorable. She's a sassy little troublemaker cute as a bean gets everything she wants she has a number of cat beds littered around this house that she point blanks refuses to sleep in she'll even sleep right next to him just to prove a point um through the winter she spends the time in the house she will patrol her front and back garden from the luxury of the windowsills above the radiators she will literally run from the back of the house to the front of the house to make sure that a cat walking through our garden has definitely left the garden. <laughs> She's just hilarious. Through the summer, she spends her summer time basking in the sun, sleeping in her garden dens. She normally makes herself about four different dens around the garden. She gets the hump when I cut the grass because normally there's a bit of a den somewhere in the long grass. Um, and she spends the summers having fights with the, guard, with the cats that have been walking through the garden through the winter. So you quite often hear her screaming at night. She's got her own little cat flap. It's got a microchip in it. So only she can come in and out of it. And if you're in the kitchen cooking, she'll quite happily sit on the back doorstep outside the door, looking in through her cat flap, watching what you're doing while making the cat flap unlock and lock again. So you, you're just walking around the kitchen cooking and all you're hearing is... Because the cat flaps opening and shutting the locks coming open and closing again and she's just sitting there draining the battery for the hell of it because why not because she can she gets treats every day she likes fish she likes chicken she won't eat any other meat um she eats dry biscuits mainly she's got a nice little water fountain she's such a little diva honestly i love her so much um yeah, and uh, through the winter, at least once a day, she'll come sit on my desk and sit right in front of me and grump, like, why is it still winter? Why don't I have outdoor heating? What are you going to do about it? I'm cold. I'm hungry. She's not cold. She's not hungry. She's just grumpy. Um, so anyway, that's uh, three minutes talking about my cat. There's a picture of her on my community page. Lots of people in the comments yesterday were asking to see her after she kind of rustled her way around my art room yesterday. I film in my art room, in the corner of my art room. So it's like my tarot room, my art room. It's lovely and peaceful in the summer, but through the winter, my goodness, she definitely lets me know she's here. So at the moment, I've got the door shut. I don't know where she is at the moment. She's probably in my daughter's bedroom. She claimed that for herself since my daughter le left home. So yeah, everything's hers. Everything's hers, of course it is. So anyway, where is your connection going? If you've got a cat, this may have an extra meaning for you, this reading. Uh, we've got lots of letters on the table. They're the charms that came out before the reading. I don't know if you're finding them helpful or not. Um, you have to let me know. I don't blame you if you just skip through all the cat talk. But if you've got a cat, 
let me know in the comments what's the name what's the character where how you how they came to be how you came to be their staff how you became employed by your cat unpaid staff how that came to happen yeah i want to know all your cat stories i love her so much <clears throat> first six weeks we had her I was like oh my goodness she was a mental little kitten she was scaling my curtains and I was looking at her thinking oh my god what have I done and then she calmed down a bit not much but she doesn't scale curtains anymore thank god anyway where is this connection going with your person whoever they are old new um may not even be a love connection maybe something else we do have a pram or a stroller on the table um it came out in the charms it may have a meaning i'm going to split the deck into four four elements four seasons most importantly for angels offering us a circle of protection so we can give and receive all of our messages all of these messages with an open heart and an open mind down this side is you down this side is this person that you've got a connection with and down the middle, okay, down the middle is, you know, you're in a bit of a make or break situation at the moment, aren't you, with this person? It's either going to get better or it's not. Um, it feels like it's either going to get better or or you're done with it. And that's what I'm kind of picking up for, for your energy. Um, I think they can, they, I think they've let you down a little bit. Maybe at the moment or in the recent past, but they can only let you down one more time and you're gone. I think that's kind of the stance that it feels like you're coming in as. Um, you've got the Six of Cups reversed for them in the recent past, which is kind of sometimes like, put, you know, we put our rose-tinted glasses on and we think about all the good times that we've had and it's kind of that's what makes us stay um sometimes that will make us stay longer than maybe we should or maybe that just gives gives them a lot of allowances and we give them the benefit of the doubt because it does feel like there's a nice connection here but it feels like it's been stagnant for a bit um in the recent past they've had the lovers reversed so it feels like they've been making wrong choices it feels like they've been closed off a little bit it can just feel like they're trying to pull away or maybe you're trying to pull away or a little bit of distance but in between you both it's been the two of cups so I will like I will say um in the recent past even now it feels like there's whatever happens wherever this connection goes it's a real and true connection it's based on love it's based on partnership it's based on all of these little happy memories that you've got together even if you haven't known this person very long I think you've got memories with this person that no matter what happens you're gonna have you're gonna remember them for a lifetime you may even have kept like keepsakes I don't often say that but like you know there's little things if you go to the cinema you keep the receipt and you put it in a little box or you know you, you keep certain photos and messages from them or you, you know, you have all these little things, it feels like, in little trinkets. Even if it's just in your memory bank, you know, little boxes in your mind that every now and again you, I know you open it up and, and have a look and it feels nice. And that's a mutual thing because they've got the lover's card reversed. You've got the six of cups reversed. And I'm kind of taking them as quite equal, you know. When they think about this connection... They don't think anything bad of it. They could never hate you. You could never really hate them. Um, and it just feels like you understand each other in a way, which makes it even more difficult when you feel someone pulling away from you, doesn't it? Because you, you, under, you can feel them pulling away, even though they haven't said anything, even though, you know, if you try to explain to your friends what, what the signs of them pulling away from are, your friends might say, what are, you, what are you talking about? You're blowing up out of nothing. But you feel it. You feel their energy and they feel your energy as well. You've got the judgment card at the moment. So like what will be, will be. If they're meant to be in your future, they'll be in your future. If they're not, they won't. Um, and they've got the page of cups reversed at the moment as well, which is 
at the moment they're meant to be putting the work in if they want to keep you they need to put the work in but they're being really lazy with it the page cup sometimes comes in my head is when it's reversed is you know the teenager that's got everything but they can't be bothered to get up in the morning the bedroom's a mess um they can't be bothered to tidy it um they, they just they're meant to be doing the things but they're not doing anything because everything's just too much effort when really they don't have that much to do and that's the kind of energy it feels like they've got at the moment and it's kind of backed up by the universe the universe is saying hey are you gonna fight for this or are you walking away from it and it feels like you're at the point of what more can I give to this? There's nothing more I can give to this. I keep prodding them. I keep trying to get something from them. And I, ca I can't do this on my own. And it feels like you can't you can't do it on your own. And it's even the universe saying, yeah, right, well, you just stay there and wait. And we're going to try and get them out of their bed. We're going to try and get them to put the energy in. But again, it still feels like they're not showing up as much. Even if they are showing up, it feels like there's a distance and again it does feel like if you explained it to a friend or someone that didn't particularly know the situation they may look at it and think what are you stressed about but because you're so connected with one another you feel it and you feel it more than anything and I'm telling you yeah if you're feeling that I can see why I'm saying yeah you know don't put rose tinted glasses on thinking, well, no one else thinks it's a problem, so I shouldn't think it's a problem. If you feel that this person's drifting from you, it feels like that. Now, we've, and you know how hard it is to get teenage. We've all been teenagers at some point in our life. When we couldn't be bothered, we just couldn't be bothered. And it, it wouldn't matter how much our mums and dads shouted at us or blackmailed us or bribed us. If we didn't have the energy, we didn't have the energy. And it feels like no matter, you, there's nothing here that you can do. It has to come from them. <clears throat> now moving to the emperor, which is reassuring for me to see because it means that they're kind of growing up. You know, the emperor, if the emperor come out reversed, I'd be like, oh forget it you know we don't like the emperor reversed well I don't anyway if you watch my readings you know that I don't um but the emperor they're moving into like maturing but again it feels like instead of having movement yeah they're they're moving into a place of well this is where I'm at this is where I'm at and that's that I mean, it doesn't feel like, even if they recognise that they need to do something different, it feels more like they're moving into a place of being quite stubborn and why should I? And that, that doesn't work, does it? Because the emperor can be quite passionate, they can be quite direct about what they want, but it feels like them saying, well, come here then, come here then. And it feels almost like, in the near future, moving into a place of, yeah, getting it all out in the open and talking about all these little things that have been happening. But them saying, well, you should have come to me and spoke to me. But because they've had the lover's card reversed and they've had the page of cups reversed, how could you possibly talk to them? Because they've been in this place of absolute denial, lazy energy, completely lazy energy. And now they're, they're going to be taking this stance of, we can talk about anything. We've always spoke about anything. If you had concerns, why didn't you come and talk to me? Why didn't you tell me about it? And I think you're going to look at them and think, yeah, but I have. Yeah, but I have. What more could I have done? Um, and it does feel like they're going to be quite rigid in that thing of, well, all you had to do was say. And you're going to be, I was stood at the bottom of the stairs literally shouting for four hours and you did not hear me. Like, you know, that is a metaphor of, you know, the parents shouting up the stairs to get the kid out of the bed. Get to school, you need to get to school. And they're like, I can't hear anything. Got my iPods in, earpods in, whatever. You know, so how for them then to go into the stance of where you should have said. And it, you'll probably be sending them screenshots of everything you've ever messaged them to prove to them that you said it. Um. It's almost like they're waking up from 
they're suddenly waking up. But instead of taking a stance of saying, oh, oh dear, right, oh goodness, well, we're in a bit of a mess, let's fix it. They're taking it as a stance of, well, I don't know how we got here, actually. Um, and instead of fixing it, they're just taking a, a like, I can't find the words, but I think you know what I mean, so... And I'm just going to end up repeating myself. So you're moving on to the Ace of Swords reversed at that point, which is kind of looking at them and holding them accountable. Instead of having your rose-tinted glasses on, which you have done for a while, you're in your moment of judgment at the, at the moment. So when they take this stance of, well, you should have just said, you should have said, if you didn't think things were working, you should have said. I think with the Ace of Swords reversed, you're going to be like, uh, 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 you're not getting away with that, actually. I did say, and this is when I said, and you probably got a catalogue of, you know, when, when you said what and their response and how they weren't listening, how they didn't hear and how they didn't respond to it and how they didn't show up and how they weren't doing all of the things. So I don't think you're going to let them get away with being this kind of, well, what more could I have done? And it's like, hang on a minute. These, this is all of what you could have done. Um... And you've got the Page of Swords in the middle of you both. And sometimes the, mainly the Page of Swords to me feels like a feeling of let down, a feeling of breaking of promises. But sometimes it feels like a learning of information. And because you have the Ace of Swords reversed, it's almost like you bring all of this stuff to the surface, which may not be the most positive things. But it feels like all of this stuff needs to finally come out because they're, they're sitting up and they're engaging and they're saying well you should have said and it feels like well actually this is what I said time date that I said it and this is what you done time date of when you done it and it feels more of a getting it all out in the open a sharing of that information uh bringing that information to the surface because it finally feels like maybe they might be ready to listen but also you may find it really quite frustrating because they're coming at it from the place of the emperor. So they're like, well, we could have fixed this. Kind of listening, but are they really taking it on board? So I'm going to do a quick nine card spread because I want to know beyond that, can it be fixed? Is it too late? Um, are they going to fight for it? Are they going to wake up? So I'm going to do a nine card spread where they're at the centre. If you claim the reading, let me know. If it feels like it's talking to you, it's probably for you. So let me know by putting a like on video or let me know in the comments. If it feels really confusing and you're like, I do not know what you're talking about, even the cat bit, I didn't even understand. This is probably not a reading for you. Take it as a, a win for your intuition. The more we use it, it's a muscle, the more beneficial it is for us. If you're just here listening because you like listening to my videos, you're welcome. I appreciate you being here. I really, really do. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, I really appreciate it. Go on, you know you want to. You can always unsubscribe later when you find me annoying. And you can always come back and subscribe again once, you know, you want to come back again. That's fine. You do what you want to do. Personal readings are always available from my website. I think I'm now back in the flow of the daily. Back in my ebb, back in my flow, back in my... Yeah, let's get up. Let's do, do what we need to do. All of the distractions of Christmas and birthdays and building and cats <laughs> seem to have I'm back on the grind, I think. It's nice. Um, so, I'm going to split the deck into four. I want to know, can, can this be fixed? The nine card spread is going to be about them. And it's going to be with them at the centre. So I'm going to lay it all out. And we've got the Emperor reversed. <laughs> five Cups reversed. The Moon reversed. Uh, the Five of Wands reversed. Um, in the middle there, the Page of Cups, which they are there. The King of Wands reversed. There may be a bit of an argument. Um, the Emperor reversed again. Uh, the Hermit. And the Eight of Pentacles. So it's going to be um, a massive wake-up call for them. I'm taking both of these Emperor Reverse. In this deck, it's got more cards. The main masculine cards have double, so they're feminine and masculine, the kings and the emperors. Um, 
So we have two double emperors reversed. Now we know what I would normally say was just run, just go. But I think it's more of a a thing of the the problem is they have their page of cups reversed at the moment there, but moving forward, they still they still have a lot of love for you. They have the page of cups in the middle. The middle card for my nine card reading is all about them. They still have these, I don't know how long you've been connected but it's almost like you connect with each other in such a really deep way and yeah they're going to move on to being the emperor but part of them's going to also still have this childish bit about them i've got a feeling that if there were three um page of cups in this deck these two would both be page of cups reversed that's what it feels like but in the middle is the most important one and that's the page of cups for them they still love you they still even moving forward, they are. It feels like they're navigating. They're trying to... I don't know. It feels like they don't quite know what to do. Um, and I think sometimes when we're confronted with... Oh, goodness. I didn't realise I was doing that. Or I didn't realise it was affecting you that much. Or, you know, the reality of the situation and, and things. The Five of Cups reversed is about they're having to learn from it. And the Moon reversed is they don't want to learn from it. So part of them's like, so when they're in this emperor, which I think would be coupled with the, the page of cups, this emperor and the page of cups, they still really love you, but they're still saying, well, you should have said something. And now that you're saying something, or you're going to be, it feels like them stepping into this thing of, oh, I can't make that mistake again. But I don't really want to look at it. I don't really want... I have to learn from it, but I don't particularly want to learn from it. Um, I don't want to open that box. I don't want to look at it. I just want to have a look at the good things that, that I do. The five of wands reversed is... I think you're both going to disagree on this. Um, And the king of wands reversed is almost like them... Pushing it away, like... Again, we should have said something sooner... So then it may just slip into the, we well, should have said it sooner. Why did you wait until this point to say it? It does. It feels like them pushing it back onto you because they don't know how to process it. It genuinely feels like they know that they need to do something about it, but they don't necessarily know what they need to do. Um, so maybe like suddenly having this catalogue of things of, that they've done might not help because it might just overwhelm them to the point that they think, I don't know what to do with that. So you should have told me sooner. Because if you'd have told me sooner, I might have known what to do with that. But I don't know what to do with that. I know I've got something I need to learn here. But I'm not quite sure what I need to learn here. I don't want to let you go. I don't want you to leave me. Um, But I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to be this person that you want me to be. I thought I was doing okay, but I'm not. And uh, it feels like this massive world of confusion for them. Um, And the hermit is I think you um you stepping into the hermit for you and disconnecting from it for a little bit and you becoming a beacon in the, in the dark for them of I think you're gonna have to like tell them or teach them in some way of well you've done these things and but don't just say well, you've done this you've done this you've done this done this you say well, well you've done this but if you had have, so you ignored, I, I messaged you such and such date, you got back to me three day, days later, you didn't even reference what I messaged you. Maybe if you'd have messaged me the same day and just acknowledged it, even if it was just, hey, I read it, I'm just having a little think about it. Um, It's almost like you're going to have to present it in a way of, you've done this, but what I really needed you to do was this. Or if they say, you should have come to me sooner, you could, you know, have a have an answer for that. Have like, well, I didn't think, I didn't feel that I could come to you. I felt shut off by you. Um, and say how you felt shut off. And then come up with a solution of, but if you had have done this, then maybe it would have. But don't, it's really complicated, isn't it? It's like... You kind of have a little list of the things that they've done wrong. Even though it's not even that bad, it's put put a rift between you both. 
you have to provide a bit of a solution but you also have to tell them what you need them to do so I need you to say good morning to me I need you to say good night to me I I need a little bit of time a couple of times a week where it's just me and you whatever it is that you need for this connection to work I think you need to present that to them at the same time as when you present to them what isn't necessarily working and I I think they'd be open to that because you've got the hermit which is you guiding them in the darkness because they've got the moon reversed they don't want to see it although they're seeing it they don't want to feel it although they're feeling it um so they're going to need a little bit of guidance through this you're going to have to if you want to stay with them and I think this is someone worth staying with because I think you both underneath it have this wonderful connection that not many many people have. Um, and if you can if you can communicate in the right way that connects with them in the right way, they'll put the work in. They will absolutely put the work in because they don't want to let you go. So, yeah, you've got to be that beacon in the dark that guides them forward because you've got to tell them bit by bit and you're going to have, don't do it the way that I told you to do it, because it's probably all wrong, but you've got to come up with a plan on this. If you don't want to lose them, you need to get it all out into the surface, and then you have to appreciate it's going to be quite overwhelming for them. They're going to deflect it as much as possible. Don't let it turn into a massive argument. Try and come up with a list of, like, five things that they can do to help you feel more secure and help bring, you know, this connection back where they don't feel like they're miles away from you. You know, work as part of a team because they love you. They don't want to lose you. But you have to guide them forward on this because I think it's going to be really overwhelming for them because they're just not going to know what they, what can, well, what can I do? What can I do? And then sometimes when people get overwhelmed like that, they're like, Right, well I'm well I'm not good enough for you then. Um maybe you need someone that's good as good enough for you. Um and you don't want them to do that, I don't think, because I think underneath it all, you've got a really nice connection. I'm just gonna end reading here, otherwise I'm gonna completely repeat myself. So that's the message. I hope the right person finds this reading, because I do think it'll be really helpful. And I do think it could save a potential connection that could possibly go up in the air if it's not handled in the right kind of way I just want you to know that this person has massively deep feelings for you and they don't want to lose you but they don't know how to deal with this so you're gonna have you're gonna have to be the teacher you're gonna have to be the guide you're gonna have to spoon feed them a little bit on this I think and they will put the work in it'll be worth it because then they will put the work in it's almost like give them the homework and they'll do it you know it feels like that so I'm going to end reading here. I'm going to wrap you in a massive bubble of protection so that your angels can take you on your way. Don't forget to go and check out my community post for my cat, my sassy little tuxie. I love her so much. She's just adorable. Um, if you see purple hearts in my comments, there are other people that make it right to the end of my reading. This little secret purple heart gang. The written word is just as good as the little emoji. We take all kinds of purple hearts here. If you see other people's purple hearts, put some likes on it. Um, and if you'd like me to pull a card for you when I have my coffee in the morning, request pull a card in the comments. It's a little reward for making it this far. So I will see you very soon.